Why is a raven like a writing desk? The world may never know. Hey everybody, it's Emily, and today we are going to be recapping one of my favorite books, uh, A Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This is the naked book. It's so beautiful. I love it. Um, anyways, this is a young adult fantasy book. Uh, we're going to be recapping it again with the Procreate because I really enjoyed uh, you guys not looking at my face. Um, so we're going to get right into that. Narrates the perspective of the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. So basically it's a villain backstory. I will say a quick mini review. I reread this because I remember the first time absolutely loving it and it destroying me completely. But upon rereading it, I was not enjoying it as much in the beginning. But if you do try and read it and are not loving it, just keep on because there is a certain point at which it all changes and it's totally worth it. That's all the not spoilers I'm gonna say, so go read it, come back, watch this video, or don't. I don't really care what you do with your life, but let's get right into it. We start our tale in the land of hearts, where things are a little wacky and impossible things happen six times before breakfast. We open on two friends, Lady Catherine, the daughter of a Marquess, whatever that means, and her maid, Marianne. They have dreams of opening a bakery in the land of hearts, as Kath is an amazing baker. She is actually in the middle of making some lemon tarts to take to the king's black and white ball. Her hopes are to encourage her bakery, but her mother has other plans, as she knows the king loves her baking. Kath, which is what she goes by, and as a nurse, I can tell you this was pretty funny for me to read as a name. Anyways, uh, she speaks with a passing Cheshire cat and tells him she dreamed the lemons in her tarts into existence. Not sure if this is a lifelong power or something that just happened. Kath gets dressed for the black and white ball, though she does not know it's black and white and her mother insists on her wearing all red. Embarrassing much? I think I would die. She catches the king's attention and they dance. The king is nice, but not really her type. Or... Really anyone's type. Fumbling, bumbling, pretty cowardly. We also talk with Lady Margaret, Jack, and Peter Peter, the new pumpkin grower, and his wife. These are all very off-putting meetings. Jack is a jerk, Margaret is passive-aggressive, and Peter is downright rude. The ball is to show off the king's new court, Joker slash Jester, where him and his raven, crow, blackbird friend, wow the audience with his magic, tricks, and riddles. Kath becomes faint due to her mother's insistence on not eating and heads to the garden, where she meets Jest and realizes he was in her dreams. <laughs> Kinky. They flirt under a white rose tree, and Kath heads home only to find out the dreaded Jabberwock attacked the ball and Jest saved the day. Marianne and Catherine discover the cobbler shop has closed and it would be the perfect place to open their bakery. The Duke owns it, so they go there to see if he will sell it to them. He agrees as long as they get Lady Margaret to like him. <laughs> Ew. More flirting with Jest at a tea party of the King's, and that evening he sneaks up to Kath's window and invites her to a crazy party hosted by this guy named Hatta at Hatta's Marvelous Millinery. She gets the courage to perform during the talent show portion and basically gives them some snacks she made. Okay, it's, I mean, it's yummy, but it's not super entertaining. The Jabberwock interrupts the party, and the brave lion stays behind to distract him, but is killed in battle. Kath gets the idea that even though this group of people are, they're a little odd, but they are very brave soldiers in a way. Once returning home, Kath tells Mary Ann she is having strong feelings for this jest, but the king begins courting her instead, and Jess does nothing about it, which is kind of annoying. Catherine's parents are throwing a Turtle Day festival as they are Marquess of Rock Turtle Cove in Marquess. Oh yeah, then Marquess and the Marchioness. That's the that's the lady name of Rock Turtle Cove, and there is to be a baking contest with a cash prize that they could use for their bakery. Kath knows Peter grows some wonderful pumpkins, and she goes to see if she could buy one. Peter is really weird and won't let her and is pretty rude about it, so she steals one and bakes a pumpkin cake? 
Not pie or anything? No. Okay. Cake. As they are leaving, Kath notices a piece of the carousel hat the lion was wearing the night he died. Hmm. Weird. But apparently, she'll allow it. At the festival, she tries talking to the king about the Jabberwock, but he is too cowardly to discuss it. The baking contest begins, and the turtle judge eats Kath's cake and is transformed into a hideous mock turtle. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, but it was real serious to them. But basically, she loses. She tries to get her dowry from her parents, but this makes them even more mad. Because, as you will recall, they want their daughter to be the queen. And, of course, they don't care about her dreams or her feelings. She goes to Hatta to ask for a loan and basically accuses him of his hat causing the mock turtle transformation. He reveals to her he is a messenger from the land of chess and must keep moving against time so as not to go mad. So basically, there will be no money coming from him either. The king takes her on a date to the theater where the Lady Peter shows up creepily begging Kath for more cake. It's pretty weird. And then the stinking Jabberwock shows up and Kath pulls out a freaking Vorpal sword from one of Hatta's hats and scares him off. Jest whisks Kath away from the drama, reveals his true intentions that he and Raven are rooks sent from the White Queen in the land of chess to retrieve the heart of a queen to stop a war. That is why he keeps leading her on, and yet not stopping the king's advances. Jess reveals he has fallen in love with her, and does not want to complete the mission. Also, Raven's not actually a rook, sorry. He's really an executioner? Once he takes her home, he is arrested for kidnapping her, and he doesn't deny it to keep her reputation intact. <laughs> so sweet. But instead, transforms into a bird and escapes, but is now a wanted man. The king chooses this time to... To propose, I guess, and Kath accepts, thinking Jess is not coming back and her life is over. Also, she's super hurt by Marianne because she told her parents about the night she left with Jess. Marianne did it out of concern, but Kath lashes out. I guess the bakery dream is dead. Jess shows up in disguise at a masquerade party, which is the king's plan to distract people from the Jabberwock attacks. With a plan to whisk her away to chess so he can make her queen there, the war will end and they can be together and she can run her bakery there. Jest, Raven, Hatta, and Kath head to the Treacle Well, which is the transition point, that is guarded by three sisters that give off a witchy kind of vibe. Their names are Tilly, Elsie, and Lacey, just in case anyone cared. They only take gifts to open the maze between the lands. Jest reveals to... Come here, they asked for a lemon seed stuck in his teeth. So, I guess that's where the lemon tree came from. Kind of grosser than romantic, but whatever. They reveal to them a terrible prophecy. This is when it starts getting good, people. A uh, murderer, martyred, monarch, and mad. This is the fate of the four friends. They can avoid these fates by not going through any of the doors at the crossroads, but they believe this must be poppycock, I guess. They enter the maze and get lost coming back to a crossroads full of doors. One door reveals Mary Ann calling out for help, so she chooses to go to Peter Peter's pumpkin patch instead, where Mary Ann has been captured and is going to be fed to the Jabberwock. It is then revealed that this is Peter's wife. She turned Jabberwock after eating pumpkins made from seeds brought from chests by Hatta that are not meant to be eaten in hearts. And now she has a desire for human flesh. It got pretty dark pretty quickly. Catherine kills the Jabberwock and out of grief, Peter kills Jest in revenge. The first prophecy has come true. In her grief, Kath turns on her friend, beloved Marianne, claiming it is her fault Jest is dead, which is pretty harsh. The sisters appear to Kath again, offering a vengeance against Peter Peter if she will marry the king and give them the heart of a queen in order to continue to sustain them. She agrees and convinces the king to marry her in three days' time by enticing him with a key lime pie, his favorite, monarch, the second prophecy to come true. After the wedding, she visits Hatta, who discusses the pumpkin seeds and how he was in love with Jest. Kath decrees travel between chess and hearts forbidden, this will ultimately drive Hatta crazy. Mad. The third prophecy to come to fruition. Kath and the King Mary and Raven is by her side through it all when Peter Peter is caught 
Uh, the king pardons him, but Kath disagrees, and Raven transforms into her executioner. I think we all know what will happen after that. Murderer. All the prophecies have come true, and Lady Catherine is well on her way to becoming the evil queen of hearts that we all know. Do we think Marissa made her like to bake because she was voluptuous in the Disney movie? Because emotional eating is not a joke, Marissa! Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed that recap. You now may head off to your book club or book report or whatever without ever having read the book, but <laughs> my word of warning is that reading is amazing and you should read the things you love. School for me killed my joy of reading with deadlines and boring awful books, so I hope these encourage you that even through all of that I still have a love of reading. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of this book and any recommendations for future recaps. Uh, if you guys like these videos and want me to keep doing them, just uh, give me a thumbs up, a subscription, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, anyways, hope you guys have a wonderful day. Love you all. Goodbye!